Yoelim, Jubilees 8, in the 29th Jubilee, in the first week, in the beginning thereof, our Pakshad took to himself a woman, and her name was Rashu Eya, the daughter of Shushan, the daughter of Elam, and she bore him a son in the third year in this week. And he called his name Kena'am. And the son grew, and his father taught him writing, and he went to seek for himself a place where he might seize for himself a city. And he found a writing which former generations had carved on the rock, and he read what was thereon, and he transcribed it, and sinned owing to it. For it contained the teaching of the watchers, in accordance which with, rather with which they used to observe the omens of the sun and moon and stars in all the signs of heaven. And he wrote it down and said nothing regarding it, for he was afraid to speak to Noach about it, lest he should be angry with him on account of it. And in the thirtieth jubilee, in the second week, in the first year thereof, he took to himself a woman, and her name was Melka, the daughter of Madai, the son of Yepheth. And in the fourth year he begat a son, and called his name Shalak. For he said, Truly, I have been sent. And in the fourth year he was born. And Shalak grew up and took to himself a woman. And her name was Muak, the daughter of Kesed, his father's brother in the one and thirtieth jubilee, in the fifth week, in the first year thereof. And she bore him a son in the fifth year thereof, and he called his name Eber, and he took unto himself a woman, and her name was Azarad, the daughter of Nibrad, in the thirty-second jubilee, in the seventh week, in the third year thereof. And in the sixth year thereof she bore him a son, and he called his name Peleg, for in the days was rather when he was born, the children of Noach began to divide the earth amongst themselves. For this reason he called his name Peleg. And they divided it secretly among themselves, and told it to Noach. And it came to pass in the beginning of the thirty-third jubilee, that they divided the earth into three parts. For Shem and Cham and Yepheth, according to the inheritance of each. In the first year, in the first week, when one of us who had been sent was with them. And he called his sons, and they drew nigh to him, they and their children, and he divided the earth into the lots, which his three sons were to take in possession. And they reached forth their hands, and took the writing out of the bosom of Noach their father. And there came forth on the writing as Shem's lot, the middle of the earth, which he should take as an inheritance for himself and for his sons for the generations of eternity. From the middle of the mountain range of Rafa, from the mouth of the water from the river Tina, and his portion goes towards the west through the midst of this river and it extends till it reaches the water of the abysses, out of which this river goes forth, and pours its waters into the sea Mayat.
and this river flows into the great sea. And all that is towards the north is Yepheth's, and all that is towards the Negev belongs to Shem. And it extends till it reaches Karaso. This is in the bosom of the tongue which looks towards the Negev. And his portion extends along the great sea, and it extends into a straight line till it reaches the west of the tongue which looks towards the Negev. For this sea is named the tongue of the Mitzri Sea. And it turns from here towards the Negev, towards the mouth of the great sea, on the shore of its waters. And it extends to the west to Afra. And it extends till it reaches the waters of the river Gichon, and to the south of the waters of Gichon, to the banks of this river. And it extends towards the east till it reaches the Garden of Eden, to the south thereof, to the south and from the east of the whole land of Eden and of the whole east. It turns to the east and proceeds till it reaches the east of the mountains, named Rafa. And it descends to the bank of the mouth of the river Tina. This portion came forth by Lot for Shem and his sons, that they should possess it forever, unto his generations forevermore. And Noah rejoiced that this portion came forth for Shem and for his sons, and he remembered all that he had spoken with his mouth in prophecy. For he had said, Blessed be Yahuwah Elohim of Shem, and may Yahuwah dwell in the dwelling of Shem. And he knew that the Garden of Eden is the Holy of Holies, and the dwelling of Yahuwah, and Mount Sinai, the center of the desert, and Mount Sion, the center of the navel of the earth. These three were created as holy places facing each other. And he blessed the Elohim of Elohim, who had put the word of Yahuwah into his mouth, and Yahuwah forevermore. And he knew that a blessed portion and a blessing had come to Shem and his sons unto the generations forever. The whole land of Eden and the whole land of the Red Sea and the whole land of the East and India and on the Red Sea and the mountains thereof and all the land of Bashan and all the land of Lebanon and the islands of Kathur and all the mountains of Sinir and Amana and the mountains of Ashur in the north and all the land of Elam, Ashur and Babel and Shushan and Madai and all the mountains of Ararat and all the region beyond the sea which is beyond the mountains of Ashur towards the north a blessed and spacious land, and all that is in it is very good. And for Cham came forth the second portion, beyond the Gichon, towards the south, to the right of the garden. And it extends towards the south, and it extends to all the mountains of fire, and it extends towards the west to the Sea of Atel, and it extends towards the west till it reaches the Sea of Mauk, that sea into which everything which is not destroyed descends. And it goes forth towards the north to the limits of Gadir, and it goes forth to the coast of the waters of the sea, to the waters of the great sea, 
till it destroy, or rather, till it draws near to the river Gichon and goes along the river Gichon till it reaches the right of the Garden of Eden. And this is the land which came forth for Ham as the portion which he was to occupy forever for himself and his sons unto their generations forever. And for Japheth came forth the third portion beyond the river Tina to the north of the outflow of its waters. And it extends north easterly to the whole region of Gog and to all the country east thereof. And it extends northerly to the north and it extends to the mountains of Kelt towards the north and towards the sea of Mauk and it goes forth to the east of Gadir as far as the region of the waters of the sea. And it extends until it approaches the west of Farah and it returns towards Afarak, rather Afrag, and it extends easterly to the waters of the Sea of Meat, and it extends to the region of the river Tina in a northeasterly direction until it approaches the boundaries of its waters towards the mountain Rafa, and it turns round towards the north. This is the land which came forth for Japheth and his sons as the portion of his inheritance which he should possess for himself and his sons for their generations forever. Five great islands and a great land in the north. But it is cold and the land of Ham is hot and the land of Shem is is neither hot nor cold, but it is of blended cold and heat.